Today, India is a nation on the move. A nation in a hurry to claim its rightful place among the comity of nations of the world. Standing majestically on the launch pad to lift off, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV, the prestigious rocket of the Indian Space Research Organization, symbolizes the hopes and aspirations of the modern, resurgent India. As tall as a teen-story building, the PSLV weighs an awesome 300 tons, of which more than 80% is propellants alone. The lifting power of the PSLV can be gauged from the fact that the first stage alone burns over 180 tons of solid propellant in less than two minutes. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, now. Plus one, two, three, four. This was the fifth flight of the PSLV. It was special because it launched three satellites into their orbits. The Indian Remote Sensing Satellite, IRS B4, and two smaller satellites, one each from Germany and Korea. IRS B4, the latest in the IRS series, is the first in the category of ocean satellites planned by ISRO. ocean satellites because oceans occupy the larger part of the Earth's surface influence weather and possess resources that are largely untapped the launch of three satellites together signaled India's arrival on the international space scene as a player on its own strength. Commercial activities of ISRO began when an American company, Space Imaging, started marketing the imageries of the Indian remote sensing satellites. This was followed by the lease of some transponders on board its INSAT series of communication satellites to Intelsat, a world leader in satellite communications. India's space odyssey began in November 1963 when a small American rocket was fired from Pumbaa 
an obscure fishing village on the outskirts of Puruvananthapuram, the capital of Kerala. The man who persuaded the international community, including bitter adversaries of the Cold War, to join hands to establish the Tumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station was Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. It was he who drafted the future course of the Indian space program for later decades to follow. It will be our constant endeavor in the years to come to provide the peaceful uses of outer space for the real problems of this nation. It was in 1975 that India made a modest beginning. This was a full five years before ISRO could demonstrate its capability to design and manufacture rockets that could put satellites into space. The idea behind this leapfrogging was to harness available space technology even before ISRO had developed its own infrastructure and capabilities. was quickly followed by the Bhaskara satellites, which are precursors to the now operational IRS series of remote sensing satellites. From among the myriad applications of space technology, ISRO has chosen to focus its efforts on two key areas of communications and remote sensing. The INSAT family of communication satellites provide services that are not only complementary to the normal terrestrial systems like the microwave, coaxial cables or the fiber optic links, but advantages as well. The one area where these satellites have made a significant impact is in the area of national and international broadcasting. If it was just a few INSAT-based TV channels in a couple of languages only a few years back, it is now dozens of regional language channels, which cover over 80% of the country's diverse population. The INSAT system also continuously monitors the birth, evolution, progress and decay of cyclones. For the first time, we have a tool that can help prevent heavy loss of life, if complemented by rapid preemptive action. A detailed analysis of the movements of cloud vectors and other variables has turned out to be a boon to weather forecasters. <laughs> The accompanying long and short-term studies assume added importance because Indian agriculture is almost totally dependent on the vagaries of the monsoon. Weather predictions have undergone a qualitative change. Satellite communications have now branched into many more day-to-day -day common applications like data transmission, mobile communications, telemedicine, computer networking, radio networking, educational TV, search and rescue, development communication, the list is virtually endless. While recounting the varied uses of INSAT, it is easy to forget that ISRO's sojourn in satellite communications began with SIGHT, the satellite instructional television experiment conducted in 1975. Hailed as the world's largest experiment in communications, SITE helped ISRO wet its hands in the complex business of satellite communications. 
Apple, the first geostationary satellite of India, followed in 1981. Apple gave ISRO hands-on experience in the design, development and operation of communication satellites. If the INSAT system helps knit India into an integrated harmonious whole, the Indian remote sensing satellites, the IRS family, help detect, assess and monitor the country's natural resources. Every feature on the Earth's surface reflects or emits electromagnetic radiation, producing an identifiable signature, which can be recorded by sensors or cameras on the satellites. The images thus recorded are computer processed to differentiate surface features. This is the basic principle of remote sensing. A camera on a remote sensing satellite can take pictures of the Earth's surface at the rate of millions of square kilometers in one hour and keep doing so for years. And remote sensing satellites return to the same spot on the ground within weeks. That's why satellites are ideal platforms for resource monitoring. The imageries produced by the IRS satellites have found application in a staggeringly large number of areas, such as soil classification, agricultural crop yield estimates, biodiversity characterization, forest cover estimation, preparation of resource maps for land use, water bodies, grasslands, etc. They have also been used in drought assessment, detection of forest fires, oil spills, potential fishing zones, and so on. Man's greedy exploitation of nature over the years has led to the current sorry state of our environment. Ozone depletion, deforestation, decreasing biodiversity, and pollution of various sorts, and global warming. The only long-term solution is to plan for sustainable development. Satellite remote sensing, when combined with geographical information systems, seems to offer us perhaps the only chance of planning for sustainable development. Between the period 1988 and 1999, ISRO designed, developed, fabricated and launched seven remote sensing satellites and five communication satellites, all of which reflect the state of the art. This feat alone demonstrates ISRO's mastery over satellite technology. If today the nation takes its telecom, TV, weather forecasting and remote sensing services for granted, it is largely due to the maturity and reliability of Israel's satellite technology. It is one thing to design and build satellites, but it is an entirely different game to make rockets to launch those satellites. Rocketry the world over is a jealously guarded technology. ISRO had to start literally from scratch. First it had to be the humble sounding rockets program. These are small rockets that can lift a payload to specified heights but cannot launch satellites. These enable scientists to conduct experiments mostly in the upper regions of the atmosphere. ISRO now has its own family of sounding rockets, the Rohini sounding rockets, hundreds of which have been used by scientists from India and abroad. The Rohini sounding rocket program enabled ISRO to plan its R&D strategy for developing satellite launch vehicles.
compared to sounding rockets, launch vehicles are giants endowed with enormous propulsive power to hurl satellites into space orbits with enormous speed, something like 26,000 kilometers per hour. The first success in launch vehicles came in the form of SLV-3, though tiny by world standards. SLV-3 was a big step for Israel. If the SLV-3 could orbit only a 40 kilogram satellite, its successor, the Augmented Satellite Launch Vehicle, ASLV, could handle satellites of well over 110 kilograms. Technologically, the ASLV was a fairly advanced rocket, for it employed state-of-the-art systems like the closed-loop guidance, strap-on motors, bulbous heat shield, and vertical integrations. But the real demonstration of ISRO's mastery over launch vehicle technology came in 1994 when the PSLV successfully injected the operational Indian Remote Sensing Satellite, IRS-P2, into a sun-synchronous orbit. Used as a launcher from Sri Harikota, the PSLV can deliver a 1,200 kilogram satellite into a polar orbit. The success of the PSLV clearly demonstrates that ISRO is self-reliant in a host of related technologies. Propellant and propulsion technology, navigation, guidance and control, telemetry and telecommand, pyrotechnics, aerodynamics, etc. The only exception, perhaps, is the cryogenic technology. Even this lacuna will soon be filled when the geostationary satellite launch vehicle, GSLV, is launched. The GSLV is designed to launch Indian communication satellites into geosynchronous transfer orbit. The entire infrastructure needed to produce, transport and use cryopropellants like liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, as well as to test cryo engines, has already been commissioned. The first flight of the GSLV is imminent. Till the advent of the PSLV, IRS satellites were launched from abroad. Not any longer. PSLV now launches all IRS satellites. But India still depends on others for launching the INSATs. But once the GSLV is operational, there would be absolutely no need to look outside for launchers. ISRO would be truly self-reliant. Though concerned mainly with space technology and its applications, the Indian Space Programme supports fundamental research in a variety of subjects astronomy and astrophysics, planetary atmospheres, earth sciences, atmospheric aerosols, solar physics, etc. Special facilities like mesospheric stratospheric toposphere radar at Gadanki in Andhra Pradesh are open to scientists across the country. Space, by its very nature, encourages cooperation. And India is at once a beneficiary as well as a votary of international cooperation in space. The very birth of the Indian space program at Pumba in 1963 was the result of international cooperation. As the commercial prospects for ISRO's products and services grow in future, the two-way international cooperation is bound to increase. 
The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, does not operate as an isolated entity in the country. Its programs and projects involve both the academic community and industry. Financial support for research, education and scientific activities in the academic institutions are extended through a scheme called RESPOND, an acronym for Sponsored Research. Whether it is know-how transfer or consultancy or utilizing industrial infrastructure, the cooperation between the space program and industry has been growing steadily. Counting both big and small, both in the public and private sectors, over 500 industrial units in the country actively contribute to the Indian space program. As we enter the new millennium, what does the future hold for the Indian space program? Where do we go from here? The basic urge of the Indian space program is to play a meaningful and constructive role in the national development. ISRO believes its efforts will surely succeed because of a unique asset it possesses. A committed group of professionals and workers for whom harnessing space for national well-being is an exciting adventure.